Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and I think it's time to have another look at the Flat Earth. You know, one of the reasons that I got into Flat Earth debunking was that much of the stuff that I saw on the internet related to Flat Earth and Young Earth creationism, etc., is the result of misinterpretation of very obvious things. And the problem that you ran into was that a lot of people didn't have the tools to debunk those things, and I wanted to show them. Now, one channel that I haven't looked at very much is the Flat Earth Brothers. Now, some of the other debunkers have addressed them, but lately they've been putting out some videos that are kind of down my alley in backyard astronomy. So I thought that I would go ahead and have a look at these videos, and then we'll go over the tools to debunk them. And in the process, we're going to have a really good proof of the heliocentric model. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now the first video is going to be called Zooming In on a Chief Star Near the Moon. Now like most Flat Earth videos, they see something in the night sky, they have no idea what it is, so they only look to their own basis of religious zealotry or Flat Earth narrative to try and make something up out of whole cloth to describe what they're looking at. So we'll let Flat Earth Brothers, go ahead and have a look at this first video, which is called A Chief Star Next to the Moon. And then I'll show you how to figure it out and some of the shortcomings that they ran into. So let's cue up the video and have a look. This is so close to the moon. Focus. Yeah, it's so cool. Literally, the moon is right there. Check this out. Looks like they're getting closer. <laughs> Wow. Getting further apart. Side by side. Signs and for seasons. Okay, so here's the moon, and we've got this little star at about the one o'clock position. Notice it's not twinkling. The moon is very overexposed. You can't see very much detail on the surface because he just doesn't have it set right for the moon, but he's got to be able to pick up this star. Now let's see if we can keep it kind of in the center. He seems to have a little trouble holding it steady. Maybe if he used a tripod or better yet an equatorial mount to offset the rotation of the earth, he might be able to keep that a little better in focus and centered. Now a slight focus adjustment to create a cool effect. All right, what we're seeing is the shimmering of the atmosphere. We're seeing kind of a reddish color to the object here. And again, very indistinct borders. I wonder what this could possibly be. What would be in the night sky over the moon on this date at this time that had a reddish color to it? I don't know, maybe let's go over and find out. There's this program called Stellarium, which is very nice, and he was kind enough to give us the time and the date and the location of where he took this observation. So let's go see if we can figure out what it is. Remember that this object was about one o'clock to the moon, about a moon's diameter away. So let's pull up Stellarium. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to the time and date listed on the video, which is September 6th at about 1.30 a.m. We've located the moon, and we see that same object at about the one o'clock position. Let's go ahead and have a look and see what that is. Okay, so what we can do from here is zoom in. And there it is. It's Mars. And it's exactly where we would expect to see it on that date at that time in relationship to the moon. 
That was mystery number one. What is this sentinel star near the moon? It's Mars. Now, a good way to tell the difference between a planet and a star is that a planet does not twinkle. Stars do twinkle. A good example would be the star Capella, which almost looks like a disco ball that twinkles so much. Now, another good key is if you look at the path of the moon, that pretty much follows the ecliptic, which is the plane of the solar system. The planets also follow along on that ecliptic as well. Now, if we look at these photographs of Mars, which are taken between July 2011 and June of 2012, we see a couple of interesting things. It starts off at quite a distance, and as you see, Mars is relatively small up here on June 30th, 2011. As we come around, Mars gets closer and closer, growing in size. Now, on March 5th, 2012, Mars is what's called in opposition to Earth, which means that there is a direct line from the Sun through Earth to Mars. It's at its closest point to us. And then as it goes around the sun, it gets smaller until June of 2012. It's back to the size it was originally. But the interesting thing is that at no time does Mars exhibit any phases. The reason for that is that Mars is further away from the sun than the Earth is. Now, if Mars was closer to the sun than the Earth was, it would exhibit phases, much like our moon does. Well, we can actually see that with Venus. Okay, so this is the Flat Earth Brothers looking at the morning star, which is Venus, of course, and zooming in on it with their P900. Let's go see what they seem to think they're looking at. That looks like Venus, I guess. That's what they're saying that is. And notice there's a little star down there around 5 o'clock. Now you can tell that this isn't very well focused because look at the edges of that disk. You see how they're indistinct and there's actually even some speculation or spiking around it? He's completely out of focus on this. Notice, though, that it's a very steady light. It doesn't seem to be twinkling at all. That's a classic sign of a planet. Now we're going to go down and have a look at this other star. Let's see if this is any different than the planet we just looked at. Come on, you can do it. Keep it in the center. Look at that thing. You see how it's twinkling and due to the atmospheric currents of air? A very poor focus. And you can tell that it's a very poor focus by that hole in the center of the object. It gives you kind of a donut shape. That means that you, you're out of focus a little bit. When a star is properly focused, it will be a single point of light. When you see a donut shape, it means that it's out of focus. Now, he's a little bit better right here. He doesn't so much have that darkness in the center. It's a little better, but there still is some darkness, so he needs to focus that a little bit more. Stars should be a point of light on a photograph. They may twinkle because of the air currents, but there should be a point of light. So in any event, we've got Venus, and then we've got that star down at 5 o'clock. Now this is an important point. Notice that there's a chunk missing out of this disk. It's not twinkling. It's out of focus a little bit, but you can clearly see that at the 1 o'clock position, there's a large chunk out of the disk. It's like it's got a phase. Let's have a look at that in Stellarium and make sure that we can identify these properly. Now here's what we're looking at. We're looking at Venus, which is the larger dot, and the star Aldebaran, which is the primary star of Taurus. You notice at the top you see the Pleiades, which is a star, an open star cluster which is visible to the naked eye out in the east. But let's have a look specifically at Venus, because we want to see, does Venus show a phase? So what we're going to do now is go ahead and zoom in on Venus and see if we can see what it looks like at that date and time. And there it is. Notice that it's got a big bite out of it at about the 1 o'clock position. Notice as well that it constantly moves due to the rotation of the Earth. Had he had proper focus, it would be more of this moon shape. 
but because he's out of focus a little bit, all we're seeing is just kind of a chunk out of Venus at about the one o'clock position. Now, what we see with Venus is very different than what we see with Mars. We do see Venus start off very small, and then it increases in size. That final Venus is about seven times the size of the smaller Venus up on top. Notice, too, that as it goes around the sun, it goes through phases. This means that Venus is between the Earth and the Sun. Now to make this easier to visualize, let's look at this diagram of the phases of Venus. As you can see, the Sun is in the center, the Earth is at the lower edge, and you see the orbit of Venus between us. As Venus goes around the Sun, the side of the planet that is facing the Sun will be illuminated. Because we are outside of that ring, what we will see is these phases. If we were between Venus and the Sun, every direction that we looked, we would be looking at the fully illuminated side of Venus. It would be full. So, Venus has phases. Mars does not have phases. That means that the order of the planets is Sun, Venus, Earth, Mars. Now, obviously, Mercury is in there as well, and it undergoes phases exactly like Venus does. So we've killed two birds with one stone with this video. We looked at Mars, and we looked at Venus, which was demonstrating a phase. Now, by demonstrating that Mars does not undergo phases, but Venus does, we have demonstrated a proof of the heliocentric model of our solar system. So... Thank you very much for dropping by. I hope everybody found that useful. I sure did. Remember, hit like and subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you again with the next video. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care, guys.